Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today I'm going to be taking a look at other ways to find some of these hard to find values and going about it in a different way. And this is based off a lesson from Stephen Chapman. And I'm going to link that lesson up here in the description about numerating DLLs and symbols. And it's another way, it's another possible way that you can find some of these values uh, that traditional scanning just doesn't seem to be giving you the results that you are looking for and you do have other ways that you can find these values you know we do recommend that you do scan for values a lot of times we're looking for constants that we can't really scan for because we need changing values to scan for those constants so I always tell you look for something that's related to that constant uh, like uh, rapid fire well a lot of times rapid fire is a constant that doesn't change however there are values related to it that do change such as the ammo count or the chamber value or the inventory ammo or things like that anything associated with the gun or with the ammunition or with the fire rate they're usually all together in the same structure also same thing goes for movement of the character itself if you look up the coordinate addresses, that's your X, Y, and Z axis on a, in a 3D studio. And basically, when you look up those coordinates, usually within that structure, and they may be far away, they may be very close, but usually within that structure, uh, you can find everything that's in relation to that character's movement, which is speed, jump height, gravity, whatever. Sometimes even collision fields for no clipping, which we'll get into that later. It's, uh, that's a lot of trial and error. There's real no, really no technique for uh, to get a no clip, except a bunch of trial and error. You just have to find the player collision fields. But uh, what we're looking for today is uh, I'm going to show you how we can use the enumeration DLL when traditional scanning isn't working. I'm going to be using an older game, Risen, and we're going to find the jump height for super jump, and we're also going to find increased running speed. And I want to thank John Jojo for this. He actually found this and gave me permission uh, to show you guys. So, John, I want to thank you so much for this, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay guys, I brought Cheat Engine up and I've already went ahead and attached this to the game. This is an older game called Risen. I really love this series. Uh, way back in the day, it's been a while now. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get into the game now. And I'm, I've already got a save location. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find our jump height and we're going to try to find some other values in association with that jump height vector so we'll have a super jump we have a speed hack all right so while it's doing that mess what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to memory view we're going to go directly to view and called enumerate DLLs and symbols now just right off the bat not every game are you going to be able to do it this way some games will allow it usually the dot net type games uh, have this information in them, but not every game is this way. But this is another viable way that you could possibly look up some of these values uh, uh, later on, because a lot of times they're using uh, the DLLs, which is the Dynamic Link Libraries, which are separate programs and functions that's apart from the game itself, but that the game will call upon to use. And things. A lot of them use your windows and a lot of them comes with the core game itself and some with your graphics card and audio and all this other stuff too. So, But what we're going to do is we're going to go directly into it and we're just going to look for uh, things and normally what I do is I'll put in jump or I'll put in gravity or something like that if I can spell but you get the idea but I'm gonna go directly to it and after you know searching around trying different locations we I found this location thanks to John giving me this information and we put in jump mode and click find and you can see here it says detect jump mode and things like that so anything that you see that you don't really know what it means it never hurts to go in there and experiment you know you don't you never know what you're going to run into and uh, I always look at this set required skills a lot of these may come if the game comes with some console cheats or hacks 
uh, that you match like the tilde key and brings up a certain screen that you can put in console sheet you may find this information this way as well also with mono if the game uses the mono dissection function also you can use that here's another method and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and double click on this detect jump mode just move this out of the way and it'll bring us to a jump so when it calls this location it comes here and it jumps to that specific function so we're going to follow that jump to the function and as you can see here is the game effects and that's part of the game it's a DLL that's part of the game itself uh, these are the different attributes and they got just about everything in here and if you can go in here and look around you can you can see just about anything that you want and you can go around and play around in it now you could crash your game a lot this way so uh, keep that in mind but we are at the uh, jump function now right here and to save ourselves a little time uh, we're just going to go directly to the address which will be this one right here now what we do is we go and play with some of these addresses we don't know what they are or what they're doing but you know when you play around with it uh, what you do is just put uh, what find the addresses associated with this opcode and all we're going to do is just jump and you see an address pop up and we'll put that on float and you see that's a 140 now take a look that is a constant so to find this normally with traditional scans we would have to probably use something like our coordinates or something but you can see it does not change so traditional scanning will not find this value directly so we have to try other means as well and you do have these at your disposal to play around with now believe me it's just as hard to find them that way you got to do a lot of digging around playing around and it's a hit or miss there is no specific way to to get this you know and go directly to it I mean this take sometimes could take hours days even you might even do it within a few minutes who knows but just to show that this is our jump height I want to get back to memory view right quick we see that the offset is CC so we're going to be playing around the dissect data structure in just a moment here but you see how high it jumps at the set amount of 140 I jump up doesn't jump very high at all the longer I hold down the space bar he'll jump to full height all right so let's see what this does if I increase it let's say to about 600 All right, now jump. Now take a look. So we said we found our jump height right here. So let's go play around in the dissect data with that just a little bit. We're going to copy down that address. We remember that the offset was CC, the base address at ESI, the offset at CC. And what an offset basically is, is actually how many bytes away from the base address that particular address is. Our jump height is this many bytes away from the base address and that's like a distance so cc would be it's 204 bytes away from the base address and that's a distance and that's what an offset is and that's what the calculation of our address is the base address plus how many bytes away it is equals this address right here that's holding our jump height so we copied down our jump pipe. We're going to go to our dissect data structure. We're going to paste that in and we're going to just put minus CC so it'll give us our base address and define new structure. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to CC. And there it is. And you have lots of other values you can play around with. Who knows what they do? Um, I think one of these actually is how fast you can jump or how I believe uh, let me see let me change a couple of these here I forget which one it was but I was just messing around with it so let's change that to uh, 800 and see what that does That didn't really do anything. So, 
But you see we do have a super jump. And when we go around playing with some of these values, eventually we you know we start at the top and we'll just kind of work our way down and see if anything whatsoever happens. And then we come to this one right here. Take a look at this one. Let's get back to the game. And you see when I run, that's how fast he runs. So when I start playing around with this constant right here and I increase that to 1500, take a look now. And he's booking it. So we found two addresses already that are constants that do affect character movement. And if we look around in this, we'll see that this is based off his coordinates as well. You can find his coordinates in here also. I forget where they are because I hadn't really played around with it that much, but it's based off his coordinates. One of these is them, so usually if you find your coordinates and they're like a low offset, you know, go ahead and subtract like a thousand off of it, you know, and go play around with some of these numbers and uh, you, know, you can find stuff that you're looking for based on character movement. It's always look for something, when you're trying to find something that may be a constant, look for something that's related to it. Something that does change that you can scan for. And usually you'll find those either this way in dissect data or you can come over here and browse memory region. That'll take us to the address itself. And you can play around with these values. Let's uh, change display type to float. And th these are the same values that you see in the dissect data structure. And you can come play around with these values too. You see what I'm saying? So, always keep in mind you got several ways to go in there and take a look around and see what's going on. And different ways that you can find these things. Now, constants or changing things like this is trial and error. There is no specific way to do it. Getting close to it, uh, we look for things that are related. And that I don't care what it is. I don't care what avenue. If you're looking for rapid fire, you want to try to find your gun values. If you're looking for height vectors, fly hacks, or anything of that nature, we look around coordinates. Anything associated with your guy. Because they'll all be somewhat together. So keep that in mind also. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write a script. For the jump height and the speed and that way we have that so this right here is our jump height and what we want to do is we want to make flags that we can turn them on and off because remember these are constants there's nothing really writing to it directly so uh, we have to change it back and forth ourselves so we know originally it was 400 so we want it to go back to normal when we have our flag off so at this location we'll make an A and B injection. We're going to put in jump 1. Just so we know what's going on with this code. And we're, all, we're automatically going to go ahead and create our labels to create our flag. And I'm going to put in here jump flag. So I know what that is. And we're going to register that as a symbol because we're going to use that uh, name in another script. So we register symbol. And go jump flag. Oops. There we go. Now let's unregister it. Get all this stuff out of the way, and that way you can just do your script. All right. So we need to assign it a place in memory, like this, and we're just going to stick it with our normal code. And let's call it jump flag, and we're going to declare. A D word as a zero so when we turn the code on uh, the jump flag will automatically be a zero okay so what we need to do is right off the bat we need it to compare to see if our jump flag is turned on or not so we want the value of that jump flag address which right now would be zero we want to compare that to 01 or to 1 if it uh, if it is equal to one we want it to jump if equal to uh, you gotta make a new label and let's call this new label jump height and that's what I want it to do I want it to if that if that equals one I want it to jump to 
to jump height right here and here's where we're going to do our modification so if it's equal to that it's going to jump down here so for right now let's go ahead and put this information in there well actually we don't really have to do that we can just have it jump back to code whoops sorry about that uh, just picking back up where I left off I went ahead and saved what I had but what we did was just copied this information down here but we're, really we don't need that all I need is this address and I'm just going to take that back out again so when our jump flag equals one it's going to meet that condition it's going to jump down here so this is what we want it to do we want it to move into this address which is our jump height address we want it to move a float value and let's just say of 700 800 was a bit much 700 may be a bit much I don't know and then after it writes that value we want it to jump the code and what it's going to do is just jump back to here like normal and return back to the main program so as long as we keep that on it's always going to keep meeting that condition and jumping here and then jumping back to here each time if it does not equal one we want to set it back to what it was and if you remember our height was at 140 Matter of fact, let me go ahead and change it back here just so we can see the changes happen. So, remember, it was at 140 originally, and that's the normal that the game programmed into having the uh, jump height at 140. That's what the devs wanted. So, and we'll just move it back to normal when the flag is off. Oops, I put 400. Let's go 140. So, this is what it's doing one more time. When we turn the code on and we and the game starts reading this information it's going to compare our jump flag to see if it's a one or not if it does equal one it will meet this condition jump if equal to jump height it's going to jump down here and it's going to write 700 to our jump height constant it'll no longer be 140 it'll be 700 it jumps to code so as long as that stays at one it's going to keep meeting that condition and just keep doing that over and over and over again once we turn that flag off we'll set it to be zero so it no longer equals one it will not meet that condition it's going to come here and write the 140 back to it and then pick up where it left off do you understand what's going on there so that's how we can do it and uh, we registered all our symbols and everything so what we need to do is go ahead and uh, assign that to the current cheat table which i've already done and labeled it super jump activate and i went ahead and did that what I also want to do is I want a new script that changes our flag from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. So when we know when the script first starts, it's going to start at 0. So we need to put a 1 in there. So let's uh, go to cheat, cheat table framework code. And that will just add the enable and disable because we're too lazy to type it ourselves. And we're going to put in here our jump flag as a label and declare a D word of one this will write one to our jump flag and then when we disable it we want it to write zero to that flag not ten but zero move the mouse out of the way there we go now we're going to assign that to the current cheat table and we're just going to call this super jump and also we want to assign a hotkey to this so we're going to say F12 will be the hotkey and we're going to put it as a child underneath the activation code and right click on it and set hotkeys and create a hotkey and we'll go ahead and mash F12 and we'll have a little sound activate and deactivate to let us know click apply and OK and if we want to see this in action let me go ahead and turn on the super jump activate let me bring this over just a little bit add address manually we can also put in here jump flag which shows us our zero so when we mash our F12 we want to see that change to one so let's do that and it does but the question is will it change this value well we need to be in the game to find that out so let me turn it back off and we want to keep this over here so we can watch it also all right so right now he's that's normal height so we want to go ahead and turn our hotkey on and we want to jump and that changed it 
did you see that oh yeah he's jumping super high now let's make sure it turns back off so we mash our hotkey again and jump and he's back to normal you see the difference and we can also do the exact same thing for our speed coordinate we just need to find where that is in memory so we can find out what accesses that address go back to the game and we have multitudes of locations we can use as you can see there I only like using locations that may not be constantly writing to it or is constantly writing to it it doesn't really matter but these two appear to be good locations I want to choose this one that seems to be only activating when we run so that's good and we can go here and what we do is the exact same thing we did for our super jump we needed our original value which I forgot what it was to be honest with you I think it was 600 let's just go check it I think it was 600 so let's see Uh, maybe it was 400. It's still, because he was moving pretty slow. Yeah, it was 400. So when we go here, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now, I'm going to fly through this one because I'm doing it the exact same way. Okay, so you should know exactly what's going on in here. So we do an AOB injection. Or we're going to do speed one, just like that. First thing we want to do is we want to create our flag speed flag and we need to register the symbol so we can have our other script uh, change it to one and zero there we go and we need to unregister it when we turn the code off Un and paste there we go and just down here we're just going to put our speed flag and when we first turn the code on we just want it to be a zero same thing we did compare our speed flag value I'm sorry the brackets mean the value of that address and we want to compare it to 01 jump if equal and we need a new label And we'll put how about this uh, speed up now ah, come on Chris I'm typing in the dark I have no lights on whatsoever so <laughs> all right come down here and we'll just put speed up Make sure we tell the computer or the game to jump to that location when that flag does equal one. All we need is this address right here, which is our speed constant. And we're going to move. It's also a float value. Start at 400, and we want to increase that to 1500 float. Same thing, jump to code. And when it doesn't equal one, we want it to return it back to normal. So we're just going to copy this, paste it, and we're just going to put it back down to 400. Just like that. It's the exact same thing we just did with the other. It's the exact same structure, so to speak. We didn't do anything different other than the names. And it's handling the different values all. So assign that to the current cheat table. We're going to put uh, speed hack activate just like that and let's come over here and auto assemble add our enable and disable here we're going to put uh, speed flag declare d word at one and on the disable we need to do the exact opposite and declare it at zero and that turns it back off And we're going to put that as F11 for speed hack. Uh, increase running speed. How's that? 
now let's go ahead and set the hotkey to it create the hotkey we're going to hit F11 activate and deactivate click apply there we go now if we want to see it let's go ahead and turn that on and let's just change that to speed flag there's our speed flag right there and we just want to make sure our hot keys working let's try the F12 that one's working both are working let's go back to the game now let's go run that's normal let's smash our F11 and now he's going fast And we can play around with these values and make them go faster, slower, or whatever we want. Let's make sure he turns it back off. And he's running normal. Jumping normal. Let's turn them both on. Oh yeah, that'll work. Look at that. And there you go. And we found two constants. And we didn't have to scan for a single value. We used uh, enumerate DLLs and symbols. And I want to thank Stephen Chapman for his great lesson on that. Please go watch it. He goes in big depth on how to use enumerate DLLs and symbols. As you see, I didn't get too much into it. He's already provided some great information on it. To understand it better, go watch it. The link is right up here in the upper right-hand corner. Also in the description is low. Also, I want to thank... Uh, all my partners, I'm going to bring them up. These guys and gals are donating to the Patreon that helps with our website and other things that we want to uh, uh, come about, such as t-shirts we're uh, thinking about coming out with. Uh, we're also going to give some of those away as prizes later on. Uh, and we got some big things planned for the future, but right now we're mostly concentrating on the website, getting everybody converted over to there. So if you have not uh, signed up for the website please come over also I want to uh, iterate that you can write us directly no game hacking questions this is just if you're having trouble logging in the website or have Facebook issues or things like that you can write us at this web uh, address right here at Gmail so that's how you can get a hold of us if you're having some type of problem and you're not receiving a confirmation email from the website or anything like that please write us here if you ask us game hacking questions we're going to automatically delete it and probably block you from writing there again okay that's what the site's for that's what the facebook page is for this is for just personal business matters right here that you're having trouble with okay so uh, please do that also come join us over at the facebook page and our website uh, a lot of great game hackers hang out there we will answer your questions we want to thank next generation hackers uh, they also have collaborated with us and uh, they mostly do concentrate on online games we're mostly offline games on my end and uh, I do recommend that you go uh, check them out they're coming out with a website real soon and uh, we wish them all the best of luck with that I also want to thank guidedhacking.com uh, that is my uh, affiliate site that I'm associated with. Uh, great game hackers hang out there as well. And they go well beyond Cheat Engine into C++, C Sharp, IDA Pro, and many, many other methods of game hacking. Full of great information. I want to thank Rake uh, for doing that. I also thank my good pal Stephen Chapman and all my admins over at the channel. I Cheat the Game would not exist without you. All right, guys, that's all I have time for. I'm sorry that this uh, tutorial came out a little late. It's just really hard to find time to do these things, but I promise I got more things coming in the future. So uh, stick around. Keep your eye out. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell, and as soon as the Cheat the Game vid comes out, it'll notify you right away. All right, guys, you take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because William doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care. Oh man, that'll work.